the deeper reasons tend to be things like um, life-threatening cases to the mother, rape and incest. And I just want you to know in, in terms of accuracy, less than 5, 0.5%, 0.5% have anything truly to do with rape, incest, life of the mother issues. So it's unfair to put that as the justifying reason why we have widespread abortion and why in the United States we have late-term abortion, which even Western Europe who seems advanced to us in many ways in terms of secularism, even they do not have that. We lead the world. Uh, sadly, it's us in China leading the world in terms of the abortion measures. Doesn't that tell us something in and of itself? I want to talk about rape and incest. Let's talk about the, the horrendous evil of rape or a domestic rape, evil compounded. When you kill the child who has been conceived as a result of rape, you are giving the child a death penalty for something he has not done. The woman is innocent. Absolutely. The child is just as innocent. Why would a woman who has experienced such a, a horrendous evil then do an even greater evil to a child even more innocent? Because the child and the woman has done nothing at all. And this is not at all to infer that the woman who is raped has done anything. But we're talking about equal levels of innocence, of personal dignity, of, of sanctity of life. And I want to give you a theological perspective of how God, how I believe God sees what happens in cases like rape and incest and there's a pregnancy that, that, that evolves. Man can say, a human being can say, a woman can say, and by the way, when I say man, remember, women don't wake up pregnant. Uh, men have to be deeply involved and deeply responsible for the gift of life. And oftentimes, uh, over 60% of women say they felt pressure for the abortion, oftentimes from the man. And he holds that in his conscience. The guilt of that he will be responsible for. But let's talk about rape and incest. This is God's perspective, I believe, on what happens. He is abhorred by the injustice that his daughter, the woman, has received at a moment of rape. But God makes good out of every evil. And God says, even though a great evil has happened, I will bring good. I will bring my image. I will bring life. And many, 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 many women have testified that the child they received, even through the, the, the audacity of rape or even incest, has been the child of grace for their life. It's been, the, the child has been the source of the new meaning of the beauty of life, a new companion, a new sense of constant love and affection between mother and child. That is truly a little foretaste of heaven. So from God's perspective, he's saying, I can make good even out of this evil. I send my image. I send a child. And then what do we do? We take the good that God is making out of that evil and we smote that image. We destroy the good. So instead of good coming from the evil, we have multiple evil. We have exponential evil. Rape leading to murder. Think about that. Think about how God makes good out of every situation. That's part of His omnipotence. That's part of His divinity. He does it for us in all ways. He's going to do it also in cases like rape and incest. And in the case that is perhaps the most heart-jerking, the case of the life of the mother, we leave decisions of life and death to God. We do not directly kill either mother or unborn child. And the percentage of abortions that have any proximity to, to really the life of the mother being taken is almost off the charts. There's nothing there. Even those who have been posed, even the abortions posed to support the life of the mother. I've met many women who've said, a doctor told me if I have another child, I would die. One woman uh, whose husband I work with has had five children since then. My friends, we have to protect life. We have to defend life. It's God making good out of evil in so many cases. And even when it's not a case of rape and incest, He's bringing new life. He's bringing new generation. He's bringing new love. He's bringing genius. He's bringing cures for things that we, 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 we pain from now, but we're, we're, we're eliminating, we're terminating the next generation. We're terminating priests and nuns. 
or terminating scientists who could make advancement in things like AIDS and Alzheimer's. Give God a chance by giving life a chance. Pray with me daily to end abortion and defend life in heart, in articulation, in discussion, in voting, in every way, defend life as God's sacred gift. It's Dr. Mark Mervali saying thank you. God bless you.